Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be building a rocket in KSP2. Uh, the goal of this rocket is to um, provide a way for Kerbonauts to get to my space station that is in orbit 420 kilometers above Kerbin. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And the first thing I like to start off doing is uh, whenever I build any sort of craft in KSP is to write requirements, outline exactly what I intend to do. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing, I just kind of like write an objective. So the, the purpose or objective, however you want to phrase it, so this is a, this is going to be a vehicle that can deliver at least three Kerbonauts to a space station in medium Kerbin orbit and rendezvous uh, with that space station. The vehicle must be capable of operating autonomously as well and must be capable of returning the Kerbonauts back down, uh, returning the Kerbonauts to Kerbin by performing a d-orbital burn. So basically I want at least three Kerbonauts to go into space and I also want the ability for it to fly itself in case there needs to be a rescue mission of three Kerbals and maybe um, you don't have space to send one up, send, send three Kerbals up with it. They can fly itself and go pick up Kerbals from the space station. And it also obviously must be able to um, return those Kerbals back from the space station. So that's what this rocket should be doing. So the rocket itself, it's going to have... I guess three primary modules. It's going to have the crew module, it's going to have the service module, and it's going to have the, I don't know, um, just the, I don't know, I, I, don't, I guess I'll call it the booster module. I don't know what the proper terminology is, but I'll call it the booster module, the module that actually takes it up into space. So the crew module is going to be where the crew is and um, that's going to have its own set of requirements and then the service module is what um, propels the rocket uh, propels the crew module toward the uh, space station for rendezvous um, and also performs the deorbitable burn as well deorbitable burn deorbital burn as well so let's go ahead and start writing some requirements for those modules. So requirements, crew module. So we know that the crew module is going to be returning from um, an altitude of 420 kilometers above Kerbin, um, which I think is considered medium Kerbin orbit. So. It's going to need a heat shield capable of withstanding reentry heats from medium carbon orbit. From medium carbon orbit. Alright. We obviously want this to be an autonomous capable craft, so we're going to need 
of autopilot slash ability to be controlled autonomously. Obviously, with autonomy, you're going to need a method of communication, so we're going to put uh, radio communication capable of uh, transmitting data to Kerbin from MKO, which essentially means any antenna in the game. be more specific, let's put antenna. And additionally, I just like to be a little realistic, so I want a redundant communication system. So I'm going to put at least two antennas. There we go. Now, obviously, uh, on the return from orbit, uh, we want a parachute that is capable of slowing down the craft such that the craft can, the craft and the crew can land safety without sustaining any damage. So let's put that. And obviously we want redundant parachute system just in case a parachute fails, which I don't think we have that feature in the game, but it's good to just kind of be a little realistic. So a redundant parachute system capable of slowing down the craft to a speed such that the turbonauts and the crew module will sustain sustain minimum damage upon impact. Okay, another thing we need is obviously the ability to transfer crew between the space station and the um, crew module. So we're going to need a docking port. <coughs> so a docking port of the size equivalent to that on the Joint Curb and Space Station, JKSS. That's what I named my space station. Now, just to make the docking process a little bit easier and more uh, intuitive for Kerbals to operate, they probably would find it helpful if we put a light um, in front of the somewhere near the docking port such that as the v as the crew module is approaching the space station uh, they would be able to see the the target docking port more clearly so we just want to put adequate lighting uh, near docking port. What else do we need? Now, obviously, um, we need power. The crew module is going to need power. I mean, one could argue that really the service module is all that needs power. Um, but I would argue that um, you could put the batteries on the service module by itself, but the thing with that is that um, you probably just want a, a backup power source as well. Uh, like for example, after the Kerbonauts re-enter the atmosphere and the service module uh, uh, gets, de gets decoupled, um, you're going to want power to the vehicle still. So let's just add a battery. A battery to sustain power after service module has decoupled. To decrease reliance on service module. That's, that's fine. Okay. 
So I think that sounds pretty good for the crew module. So now let's go to the service module. So like I said earlier, the goal of the uh, service module is to propel the crew module from an orbit all the way to the to rendezvous with the space station and also to provide a deorbital burn deorbital burn uh, to get the crew module on a trajectory such that it re-enters Kerbin. So the question here to ask is well what type of orbit uh, will the service module be expected to uh, operate from in order to get to the space station. So really it's going to require, you know, more or less fuel depending on what what uh what type of orbit it's at in relation to where the space station is at. So the, so the question I have to ask is what altitude will the service module be at? once it gets into orbit. So what I'm going to assume is that um, the service module is going to operate from a 210 kilometer orbit. That is half of the 420 kilometer orbit that the space station is at. So that means that the next module after this one should boost these two modules into an orbit of at least 250 or 210 kilometers. So in our requirements, we're going to write the service module must have delta V capable of rendezvousing with the space station from an altitude of and here's where I'm going to word it a bit differently than what I just said from an altitude equivalent to the space station and then I'm going to add a tolerance, 50%, meaning 210 kilometers. 50% 50 is 50% 50 of 420 kilometers is 210 kilometers. So now we need to think about our deorbital deorbital burn. Um, how much delta V is going to be required to deorbit the craft? So, under the assumption that um, I guess we're going to be deorbiting straight from 420 kilometers, um, the thing about that is just that the higher up you are, the faster you come in the higher heat you generate as you come into the atmosphere. So we probably want the vehicle to um, be capable of uh, lowering the out the the ap the ap apoapsis or apogee um, as well as the periapsis or perigee um, to an altitude um, that is still where it's still in orbit, but uh, it's it's uh, traveling at a much lower velocity, and it will generate a lot less reentry heat. So, I don't want to reenter from 420 kilometers above Kerbin. Let's let's do this. And additionally, have enough delta v capable of. reducing the V 
vehicles orbit such that the apple apoapsis is less than 100 kilometers. If it's less than 100, so Kerbin's atmosphere is at seven is uh, is below 70 kilometers. We don't have to get the orbit that low. I would say, uh, yeah, I would say that um, re-entering from anything less than 100 kilometers is not going to generate much heat. So let's just say that reducing the vehicle's orbit such that the apoapsis is less than 100 kilometers. That is our requirement for the service module. So now that we have all these parameters defined, we're, the last question we need to ask is, well, based on those parameters, based on those requirements, how much delta V do we actually need to satisfy those requirements? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue writing the rest of the general requirements and then I'll get into the specifics. I'll try to figure out the specifics right after that. So the next thing we're going to need on the service module are RCS thrusters. Um, those will help us fine-tune our, our trajectory such that we are on the right path to rendezvousing with the target once we're in close proximity of it. So RCS thrusters, and we need uh, RCS thrusters to have uh, fuel, obviously monopropellant, um, but how much, all right? So I don't know, I mean, I don't know exactly. I'm just going to kind of come up with an arbitrary uh, an arbitrary value and or, so I'm just going to come up with an arbitrary number and I'm going to say that the RCS thrusters should be capable of operating at least one RCS thruster in one direction whether that's left, right, up or down in one direction at least one RCS thruster has to be able to constantly run for at least five minutes. I don't know because the thing about KSP is that it doesn't give you a delta V for RCS. Um, so I'm just gonna instead of quantifying things in terms of delta V, I'm gonna do it in terms of time. So at least one of the thrusters must be capable of running constantly for five minutes. So we need enough fuel such that at least one RCS thruster can run for at least five minutes. Bing bada boom. Next thing we obviously need any on any craft where we're doing any sort of maneuvering, we're going to need a stability assistance. So, stability assistance. Bing bada boom. Now, um, if you see service modules in real life, a lot of them have like little like solar panels on them and stuff to help them. Uh, stay powered um so let's let's do that so power storage battery and solar panel all right and so that's i think really that's all we need for our uh, service module so now what we can do is we can kind of get get into the uh I don't, I don't know what this is called the you know the, the part that the part of the the module that boosts us into actual actual orbit I don't know I mean I don't want to say the booster module because yeah I don't know let's just call it the booster module so all right so the requirements for this module is obviously going to be a lot less because it just has one simple task get everything else in the orbit that's all it is so 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write um, enough delta V in order to uh, deliver the vehicle into an orbit of 420 um, above Kerbin and I'm gonna just add some I'm just gonna have some spare fuel in there too so plus 100 so 500 kilometers 520 kilometers above Kirkman. So that should be good. And then obviously we want extra stability assistance. And I can't really think of anything else this module would need. One more thing. So now we have to answer those other questions we haven't answered. Those questions are basically how much delta V whoa those questions are how much delta V does this translate to how much delta V does this translate to so I guess we can ask chat GT I guess we can ask chat GPT let's try that in the game Kerbal Space Program, how much delta V is the minimum required to reach an orbit of 520 kilometers? All right, so chat GPT says 3,200 meters per second, assuming we have a, an efficient launch profile. So let's go back to our requirements document and fill that in. So I want to add a bit extra in there just to be safe. So rather than 3,200 meters per second, I'm going to say 3,800. And so that should be, I think that should be sufficient. So now the next question we need to answer is how much delta V do we need in order to satisfy this requirement? So if our space station is at 420 kilometers and the uh, module is at 210 kilometers, how much delta V do we need to rendezvous with it? So let's ask ChatGPT. In the game Kerbal Space Program, how much delta V is required to rendezvous with a target at an orbit of 420 kilometers if you are at 210 kilometers. So chat GPT thinks we need around 750 to 900 meters per second of delta V. Uh, okay, so now we need to answer the second part of that question. And just to remind you, we need to do a deorbital. We need to de do a deorbital burn. Um, but before that, we also need to reduce our apoapsis to 100 kilometers prior to re-entry. So let's ask ChatGPT how much delta V is required to deorbit or required to adjust our orbit from 400 kilometers 
Run to 20 kilometers down to 100 kilometers. Let's ask ChatGPT that. You know what? I'm also just gonna um, exaggerate a little bit just because I want to add extra delta V more than I need. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT in the game Kerbal Space Program how much delta V is required to adjust my orbit from 500 kilometers down to 100 kilometers. So, ChatGPT thinks that we need approximately 1,564 delta V to do a maneuver like that. So, 15, let's just, let's just round it up to 1,600, so 1,600 plus our calculation from before, 900, so what does that give us, 2,500? So, perfect, 2,500 is what our delta V, what delta V we will be aiming for for the service module. Alright, so I think we've got our requirements, so now it's time to build the rocket. So now let's go ahead and throw on our crew module right there. Go. All right, now to satisfy our autopilot requirement, we want a remote guidance unit right on top here. All right, and time to place my antenna down. I'm gonna place it here on the side. I like this antenna over the other small antenna just because I don't have to extend it. Now the other antenna, I'll put it on a different location, probably right here. Or actually, I'll just put it uh, right here. Now, I just want to squeeze a battery in here, too. I'll use uh, another small one. There we go. There we go. Uh, I don't know. Now we need our docking port. Where is that at? Uh, there we go. Alright, actually I kind of want to swap this around a bit, so... Sorry guys, I'm a little... There we go. <laughs> now let's go ahead and put our light on. Let's see... Oops, that wasn't right. There we go. Mm. Uh, I think I kind of put a, I kind of want to put just one light on and not two. So I'm gonna put one on, and I'm gonna keep it right here, and that side will indicate, um, you know, what 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 side is right side up. So the side on the, that the light is on is the side that's right side up. Now we need our parachutes. So those right there should be good. Obviously I want it to be... Oh, no. I gotta move those. I don't like parts intersecting. So there we go. Now, obviously I'm gonna need more parachutes than that if I want to have a redundant system that's reliable, so let me grab the other chutes. Now these will kind of act like drogue chutes, so they will be a precursor to the main chutes. They will deploy first at a higher altitude, and the main chute, the first one I put on there, will go out right after that. And now this will be the reserve parachute, so these are the backups. Gonna put it somewhere 
don't know where. I guess there it would be good. Probably want a second one as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that now. Now this heat shield, I know for sure, will get us back in the curve. All right, and now just our decoupler. There we go. And now we probably just want to configure our shoots properly. Now onto the service module. So we need a stability assistance. There we go. Now we need enough more over pound. I know this kind of thing will do it. Now we need to choose the right fuel tank. Um, let's see how much delta V this gives us. 1500, definitely not enough. So let's try again. If we double the fuel tanks on it, maybe that will work. 2500, there we go. Now we want the thrusters to be right around the center of gravity. So. One thing to keep in mind is that it's going to shift as the fuel tank uh, empties, so I want to put it above the center of gravity right now. And as the fuel tank empties, the center of gravity will shift upward toward the side of the rocket with more mass. So I need to put it up here somewhere, I think. There we go. Now just as an experiment, I'm going to drain some of the fuel from the tanks. And let me go ahead and actually take all of the fuel out. And our center of gravity should have updated, yeah, but it did not. Um, well, let me, so yeah, let me, there we go. So see the center of gravity shifted upward when I took the fuel out. Now if I put it back, it went back down. See that? Now let's put our battery on. Let's put it somewhere on there. Like maybe here, or maybe the sides. Yeah, I think the sides will work right around the center of mass too. Right there. I don't know if you guys are noticing, but the delta V is also um, going down as I put more things on here obviously it's getting a bit heavier um, I'm just gonna ignore that because it's only a hundred off from what our goal is so now we got the solar panels on there and we should be good with that now let's just slap a decoupler on there and let's get to the so-called booster module more SAS or stability assistance now I just need to start playing around with fuel tanks until I figure out what's the best combination to get the right thrust to weight ratio and delta V to get us in orbit. So let's start off with these. What size is these again? Medium, right? So that got us about 2,500 delta V on top of the 2,500 we already had, so we need quite a bit of improvement. So I'm just going to slap these boosters on here and see what happens. Uh, I want to ignite them at the same time, so let's put them in the same stage. So that gives us 3,179 delta V which is not enough for one, but for two, if you look at that TWR, it looks uh, very, very high. Um, so, I know that as the fuel drains, the TWR is going to get higher and higher. These are big boosters. They seem like they're gonna run for quite a while because there, there's only a thousand Delta V left in the stage after they decouple. Which actually means we have the right amount of delta V. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to um, 
let me play with things a little bit. Maybe if I put a, hold on, let's see here. So if I take the fuel out, then what is going to be the thrust to weight ratio? 2.2, 3 point, wow. Yeah, that's, so that's like a really high TWR as the fuel tank drains, so it's gonna be a problem. I mean, I can limit the thrust of the main engine, but that's not gonna help much at all. I mean, um, even if I do that, it's not gonna reduce the thrust away ratio by much. Um, so I don't wanna be in the air with a really high TWR. So I mean, even if I limit the thrust down to zero, I still have a 3.385 uh, thrust to rate ratio. And that's with the engine off. If I put it on, the main engine on, it's four. So the TWR is going to be way too high with this configuration and I'm not going to be able to control it. So I got to fix that. So I'm going to try these smaller boosters here and see how they compare to the larger boosters that I was trying a moment ago. So, you can already see the TWR will decrease significantly. If I light them up all at the same time, I get a pretty decent TWR. Um, 1.22, which is really good. Now I just don't have enough delta V um, to get into orbit. So, I'm probably going to have to add more boosters or something to fix that. But the TWR issue looks like it's going away, which is really good. So I'm going to double the amount of solid fuel boosters and see what happens. So it looks like we've got uh, 3100 um, delta V, um, or sorry, I'm, I'm misreading that, yeah. So it looks like we've got enough delta V to get into orbit, actually. That's really good. Yeah, so we've got 3300 delta V, or 3400 really. So we've got enough. Hmm, so, alright, well, I just want to really satisfy that other, um, really want to satisfy the requirements. So I'm going to add another fuel tank to, uh, for liquid fuel and see if I can squeeze a little bit more delta V in there. Um, so we can meet our requirement of 3800 delta V. So that gets us closer. Um, we're at 2600 delta V. So I need just a little bit more fuel to get to um, 3800 delta V. And so I can probably just throw on some more fuel because my thrust to weight ratio is still looking good. So I'm going to replace this fuel tank um, and put the regular one on. There we go. Let's see. See how that does. And there we go. We've got 3800 delta V. So we are ready. We are ready to rock and roll. We are we are good. Alright. Now just the SAS and we we'll wanna get another we we'll wanna get a nose cone on top of here. So we want it on all four. And there we go. Now we want to move these down a little bit closer to the height of the engine. There we go. Now we're just going to add our struts. Alright, about there. Alright. And some more struts. Down. Over on the other side. Over here is good. There we go. Right there. Now, uh, let's go ahead and put our launch towers uh, right there. It's good. And our rocket's looking like it's good to go. So I had a requirement where the RCS thrusters had to work for at least five minutes before running out of mono propellant. So to test that out, what I'm going to do is uh, thrust the uh, RCS thrusters like so. And I'm going to see how long it takes to move by uh, 0.1 mono propellant units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
So it took 7 seconds to move 0.1 units, so we have 4.62 units in total, so 4.62 divided by 0.1 is 46.2, so if you take that multiplied by 7, that gives you the amount of seconds uh, the monopropellant should last, which is way more than 5 minutes. Alright, so before we roll this baby out to production, I need to like, make one minor change, and that's to these solar panels. I want the retractable ones, therefore it gives me a lot more clearance when I'm uh, docking at the space station. And it appears to me that we are good to go, so let's go ahead and take her up. This is, the, this is the moment where we get to see whether all our efforts paid off and whether we did everything right. And it's curving. And our space station is right on that orbit over there. So, just gonna fast forward a little bit because I want to take off right at dusk or dawn, sorry. Or is it dusk? I get the two mixed up all the time. But I think Kerbin looks a lot more pretty when uh, it's transitioning from daylight to night. Alright, well, let's see, uh, let's see what happens.
just about in the orbit, so I'm going to go ahead here, in here in map view, I'm going to set my target, and I'm going to start uh, messing around with the maneuver node tool to see if I can get an intersect uh, as I'm ascending into orbit. So, let's see. So we got our node set, so we're going to go ahead and start our burn pretty soon here. So I'm set to intersect over there, but 3,000 meters is quite a big distance away, so I'm going to see if I can set a new node and uh, try to get a bit closer. And so now we have a much better separation, way better, look at that, that's, that's, that's way better, look, 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 it's getting better. Alright, so we are good to go. So now let me go ahead and reduce my speed relative to the target. We're getting close. There it is. I'm a little bit fast though. I'll catch back up to it.
So now that we're here, we want to deactivate our engines just to prevent any mishaps. And we're going to use our monopropellant thrusters to get us the rest of the way there. So now my target is set at that docking port over there, so I'm um, just going to get my prograde on that, which is on now, and I am headed at that docking port at 0.5 meters per second. Headed straight there, and I've got my nose pointed at it, so I should be docking any moment now. These are the final moments. This is the moment we've been waiting for. This is it. This is it. We made it. We made it. Every everything we we did worked. Everything we we did from all the way from the acquirement stage to the rocket. I mean, we, we didn't have any sort of failure or anything. It, it just worked. That's 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 the result of careful, careful planning. So that is awesome. Save the game. And, uh, yeah. And so now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the curls. So I think I'm going to, let's see who's here. I think I'm going to take Bill home and I'm going to leave the other guy on the station. So now we are nearing the final stages of our test flight. We are going to undock from the space station and de-orbit.
So now we are going to head and perform our retrograde burn. Let's get it. just yet. We're going to get our periapsis just above 70 and then we're going to adjust our apoapsis to bring it below the 100 kilometer uh, limit. Uh, then we will go into the atmosphere. So now we're going to go down to our periapsis and perform our retrograde burn from there. Uh, which will then enter the atmosphere at So now we are on track to re-enter the atmosphere. Um, so this is the final phase of our test flight. So pretty soon here we're going to be uh, decoupling from the crew module. So as you can see there, we just decoupled from our. A service module, and so now we are free falling back in the Kirpin. We are re entering the atmosphere uh, right at this moment, and uh, it's time for the final phase of our test flight and see how those parachutes work out. So we have drogue parachute deployment, not full deployment, but uh, they have been let out. They're going to fully deploy at an altitude of around 3,000 meters, if I recall correctly. And then they will be followed by the main parachutes.
full drill parachute deployment followed by main parachute deployment. Full main parachute deployment should be coming up at a thousand meters uh, above speed, sea level. see we have full deployment of both the main parachute and the general parachute. Looks like the Kermanot Bill Kerman will be landing safely in the water but luckily uh, this thing should be buoyant due to how low, lightweight it is. And I think it should be buoyant. So it looks like we've just about passed our final of our test flight. Just a few more seconds here until touchdown. Test flight is complete and it is successful. And now it's time to recover this vessel. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, give me a thumbs up. You know, I put some hours in the chopping this up and editing it. So I'd be appreciate if you just gave it a thumbs up, uh, share it if you if you want or whatever. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if I should make more videos like this, making requirements of vessels and all of that. Just let me know.